everybody, it's me, Billy, again, and I'm making another video on narcolepsy. It is about cataplexy. Cataplexy affects 70% of narcoleptics, so a big chunk of us have it. It doesn't affect everyone, though. So to understand cataplexy, you need to understand sleep a little bit. When the average person goes to sleep and they have some dreams, your brain tells your body to become paralyzed so that you don't act out your dreams. People with narcolepsy don't have this chemical that tells them to do these things. So people who don't have this chemical, narcoleptics, they go throughout their day and then they have a big emotion and their brain says, oh no, your body needs to be paralyzed. That's what cataplexy is. We don't have that chemical telling us that it's nighttime or it's daytime. We just don't have it together. There can be lots of different severities of cataplexy. The severe cataplexy that I like to think of, the puppet on a string and someone goes along and cuts the puppet off and then they collapse. The dropping of the head like this, a loss of muscle control in the arms or just in the legs or in the hands. Sometimes I'm not able to smile and sometimes it just drops the side of your face. A full body twitch, I hate that one. It's a lot for me. It's like, Ugh. and that's really awkward to do in front of people. Not that I'm ashamed of it or anything. I'm not. I'm just like, sorry, that was cataplexy. Before I was diagnosed, I had no emotions. I didn't let anything get to me. I just kind of had this glazed look because I was tired and because I just didn't care. Because I knew if I did get emotional, something weird happened. I know now that it was cataplexy. I remember getting emotional a few times and I would just shake. And now that makes sense. So it was cataplexy and now I just kind of let the emotions flow. I think a lot of people confuse excessive daytime sleepiness and cataplexy because it's kind of a combination that they show in movies and TV shows. None of that is like correct. It's, it's very odd how they show it. Another odd thing about cataplexy is that it's the only symptom that a lot of people see or notice. You cannot tell when someone has narcolepsy unless they have cataplexy. I was at the airport recently and I was like, I wonder if any of these people have narcolepsy and they, did, some of them, but I could not tell who at all. You cannot tell who has narcolepsy. Uh, it's not something that you see. Random fact about cataplexy. When you have a cataplexy attack, you are fully conscious. So when someone is talking about how goofy you look, you can hear it. So don't say anything rude or weird or not kind when somebody has a cataplexy attack. It is just part of their daily life. They cannot help it. They don't have the chemical that tells them how their body is supposed to be awake and supposed to be asleep. I kind of feel bad for people who have narcolepsy and don't have cataplexy because no matter what, people are not going to see their disorder. They're going to tell people about their disorder and people are going to react by saying, yeah, I'm tired too. Yeah, I have vivid dreams. Yeah, I've had sleep paralysis before. I don't sleep well at night. I just feel bad for people who don't have cataplexy. Not that I wish cataplexy on anyone. It's not fun unless you get used to it and you can laugh about it. My suggestion for all you fellow narcoleptics is that you just laugh about it. It is usually funny unless it puts you in a dangerous situation if you're swimming or something like that. I know that it can be dangerous. It gives you a certain quirk. Not many people are gonna run into somebody like you. You are special and unique and love yourself for it. It was awesome talking to you guys. Peace.